Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, bring it! Woo! Um, what do you think of Patty Mugen, huh? 35 link building tips? 35 minutes? That is amazing. I wanna, I, in fact, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go back to work and start doing, I will see you guys later, thank you. Thank you, I'm joking. Okay, so, 35 link building tips, 35 minutes. Today we're gonna be talking about you guys. We're gonna be talking about agile marketing, how you can use it to hack your organization with just a few very simple principles. Um, you can download these slides. And uh, this is a presentation that really is all about you and your organization. So we're going to focus on you. We're going to have a, what we call an audience surrogate, which is uh, this lovely lady. We're going to call her Rachel. This is Rachel. She's a real person. Um, and when you download the slides, you'll be able to see a little bit more of her story. Um, in the uh, appendices where we have a bit of a coda. But I'm speaking to you. You guys are awesome. You're here at MozCon. By definition, you are awesome. You're the best of the best. You're at the top of your game. You're trying out new things before anyone else does, right? You're getting actionable tips that you can immediately apply to work. So you know SEO. You're social media whiz. You do inbound marketing. You do internet marketing. I know there's folks here who do paid as well, right? You're a leader. You are nimble, light, fast, quick. You're leading your organization, which is fantastic. So we have to ask, why is SEO still hard? I've been doing SEO for over 10 years. A lot of you have been doing it for longer than that, right? Why is SEO such hard work? Well, here's one reason why, right? So uh, Google's, uh, uh, Rand talked a little bit about how Google's becoming more open and transparent. They told us in April that they released 52 changes to their algorithm, and they gave us a rundown and named all of them. Fantastic. Next month, they made another 39. Now, I'm no Dr. Pete. I'm no Matt Peters, data scientist. But that's at least 53 changes, I think, in two months. It's just an amazing amount of change, right? So you know about these. What else? You know about these guys too, right? Panda and Penguin forever changed our discipline, changed the way we work. They uh, penalized all the things we know we should not be doing. So Google says, what should we do today? They say, we should take over the world, right? We should change the way that SEOs work so that the best content, the most relevant content, comes to the forefront for searchers. You guys know about this too. Keyword not provided. Look at that ramp up. And Rand mentioned earlier, uh, what, was, what was it, 56, 57% of organic traffic is keyword not provided. For aria.com, it's uh, 27 right now. Um, and we've seen that same curve. You know about this too. Customers are changing their behaviors. They're not sitting at home with the desktop anymore, right? They're moving across channels. They'll do shopping at night on their tablet. When they're in a store that you operate, they'll have their mobile and they'll be doing price comparisons right there, right there in the store. So you know about those two. And of course you know about these. Rand showed us uh, the usage figures for all of these major social networks, right? And while it's great that there's a diversity of communities out there for us to interact with, for us to engage people with, you've still got to handle all those, right? You've got to find ways to prioritize your work. You also know about this. This is a great post by Carson Ward on the uh, Moz blog um, talking about how to avoid link spam, right? Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, the old methods do not work. And they shouldn't. It's good that they don't. But when we have uh, uh, something like a panda or a penguin come out, we have to be able to respond to that change quickly, fastly. You also know about this. This just happened last weekend. Google sends out a new batch of unnatural link notifications. And we saw from Rand's uh, talk that SEO Moz got one too, right? We got to be able to handle that. We have an incredible amount of knowledge in our community, so much that there's, what, dozens, hundreds of posts on inbound.org every single day. And that was before they added the job board, right? So we have all these intakes. We have so much knowledge out there, so much sharing and so much learning. Um, and that's fantastic, but it's also a lot of change. This is an industry in flux. This is an industry that is constantly, every single day, being disrupted. 
don't know if you guys saw Google Webmaster blog last night, but they've got a new site indexation feature. There's a new Panda update rolling out, right? A lot of change. So that means at the end of the day, you've got a really big problem. And the problem is not you. You guys, remember, are awesome by definition. Your problem, you might be asking, what is it? Your problem is not you. Your problem is your organization. Because this is the way you work, right? Your organization forces this system on you where you do one thing at a time. First, you do this batch of work. And when that's done, you move on to the next batch. And this is a process that, when you stack it up, can take weeks, months, possibly years for larger projects, right? And as you're working on those huge, long project cycles, nothing goes out to your users, right? Nothing. So how can you adapt to change when you're working in that kind of system? It's really hard, because your system, your work process, your teams, your organization don't respond well to change. Next, this is how you're organized. You've got design, production, copy, content, SEO, paid search, affiliates. You're all in silos. And that means that your organization is structured for its own benefit and not so much for your users. Where do users fit into this? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. So this is as fast as you can respond to change. This is it, right? And why? Because your hands are tied. Not because of a lack of talent, not because you're not awesome, not because you don't keep learning, you totally do, but because your organizations don't. Your organizations have become incapable of taking in new knowledge quickly, rapidly, processing that, and then getting new benefits out to users. The one thing at a time doesn't scale. It does not adapt, and it certainly does not deliver value to your users or to your customers. Um, so quite honestly, one thing at a time, waterfall methodology does not work. Now, software developers have known this for years, but it's time for marketers to do better. So that's why we're talking about agile marketing. It's taking the principles of agile software development, which a lot of our organizations already do, and then saying, what can we learn from that to make marketing more efficient, respond to change faster, and get more value out to our users more often. Not in six month cycles, but in two week cycles. So let's talk about how we can do that. We're gonna have four agile principles and 13 hacks, 13 ways you can change your organization, the way you do work, not just for your own benefit, not just for your teams, although that's there as well, but also for your customers or your users. So let's jump in. Customers first, customers first, customers first, if you take nothing else away from this, customers first. Here we have Rachel holding up an REI gift card. Uh, I should mention, Rachel is not an REI employee. She is someone who is amazed and delighted by getting an REI gift card. This is exactly how we want our customers to feel, right? But in order to have them feel that way, we have to place them first in terms of how we structure our work and even the work that we actually do. So that's Rachel. Let's talk about ways to do that. One hack for your organization is doing user research, developing personas, and figuring out what your users need to succeed in their goals. So the hack is user stories. So it's a really simple formula. You say, as a role, usually as a customer, perhaps as a shopper or buyer, I want to do something. I have a goal or a desire. For example, I want to be able to find the lightest weight tent so that, and then a benefit, so that I can complete my backpacking journey across the Adirondacks, right? Without carrying extra weight. I want a simple shopping experience that helps me figure out exactly when I need to do that. And that's because we, we use user stories because customers are real people with real values just like Rachel. And this isn't simply a way of restating what you are already going to do and just packaging up in a new formula. In order to do this, you actually have to work with your users. And something that agile development does really well is bring users or customers into the development process. And they do it by way of user collaboration. So this is another hack. I don't know how many of you saw the uh, Cafe Batman Breakfast post. Um, you can see I've sneaked a little high MozCon action in there at the bottom. But uh, I'm sure we're going to learn about the outcome of this later. 
And something Moz does really well, right, is bring all of us, the power of its community, which Jen is gonna be talking to you next uh, uh, about that, by the way. They take us, their community, um, and they bring us into their marketing and their development process. They do that really well. This is something you can steal from them and do with your own customers. REI, we're, we're not software developers. We, we're big, old, multi-channel retailer. We have brick and mortar stores. We're doing this too, and I'll show you how. This is an example of, uh, this was shot actually in our Seattle flagship store. It's right by a great coffee place I hear. That's what I hear. Um, and uh, what we did here was uh, we uh, invited customers to help us develop uh, a new mobile interface uh, uh, for, our, for one of our apps. And here we see uh, two of our interaction and uh, UX designers. Uh, we've got Courtney and Alishima here. And uh, what they're doing is not guessing. <laughs> what they're doing is actually bringing a customer in to test out a user interface. And then as they get feedback from, their cust from that customer, they are changing it rapidly on the fly and retesting it with the same customer uh, to see if it works any better. And what we end up doing is releasing the version that ultimately wins. So why guess when you can find out and adapt? That's something that's really hard to do in a waterfall development cycle, really easy to do with Agile. Here's a tool we use to do that, Balsamic, right? You can find it at balsamic.com. It's really cheap. Um, very lightweight, comes with a bunch of templates, uh, and it's a great way of developing rapid, low-fidelity prototypes. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be good enough to test. And even running one test is going to bring a lot more learning to your, uh, uh, to your organization than running no tests at all. Uh, Axure, A-X-U-R-E, is another great tool for doing prototyping, but it's also a lot more expensive. So. Cross-functional teams this is another great agile principle. You guys remember Voltron? Any children in the 80s out there? Yeah, Voltron, right? Because yeah, sure, there are transformers, right, that change into trains and cars and airplanes and stuff. But Voltron was a bunch of robotic lions. Oh my god, how much more awesome is that? The black line, the red line, the green line, so cool. And every lion was driven by a human pilot who had a different sort of skill set, different kind of personality. And when they came together to form Voltron, it was this giant robot with a sword that was like miles high. It was amazing. Uh, you can tell I watch a lot of TV as a kid. I've wasted my life. So um, cross-functional teams, though, uh, Voltron really illustrates this principle well. Because while those people with different skills and personalities uh, often clash when they come together, they also do great things like defeat giant evil robots. So uh, we're gonna talk about how you can build cross-functional teams at your organization, the value for doing that. So here's the hack. The hack is breaking down the silos. I showed you the org chart earlier, right? You got marketing, you got IT, you got e-commerce, you got operations, or you have designers, and you have content, and you have SEO, and you have paid, and so on. Uh, when you're structured that way, you're not incentivized to work together. And when you don't work together, you create confusing experiences for customers. They see one message here. They see one message there. Uh, when they see something in your store, it doesn't match what's online. It's a really big pain point. So the hack is to break down the, si the silos. So when we have something that's structured like this, right? Production design content, SEO project managers, business intelligence, or analytics. What does it look like in real life when you, when you break that down? It looks a lot like this. You have everyone together, all in one room, all in one cubile, all partnering together at the same time. And this illustrates the agile principle of interactions over rigid processes. Something that we really treasure and value with agile is the ability for people to have direct conversations, to engage with one another. So all the things we care about as marketers, right? Engaging our customers, bringing them inside, we actually do with our development teams as well. Now this shows us what uh, agile software development looks like, but it's really easy to apply this to marketing. As a matter of fact, it looks a lot like this. You take those silos, switch the labels, you all sit together, and the magic actually starts to happen. Your email volume goes down, and your output of work goes up. So we talked about responding to all those changes, right, earlier, responding to an industry in flux and in disruption, this is a great way to do that. 
Another great hack is self-organizing teams. When you break down the silos, it ain't going to be pretty. It's going to be messy, right? It's going to be difficult. You're going to have some hard conversations. And that's OK. That's part of the learning process. It doesn't have to be neat and clean. So here, we see a really well-organized room. But when teams organize, it's exactly the opposite. And that's OK. Because a feature of Agile is that the team knows best. The team is going to invent its own processes to get the work done in the way it sees fit. So rather than a rigid structure and a rigid set of processes and tools that are imposed by someone who's not even involved with the team's work, the team builds their own and figures out what works best for them for driving value for customers. Only the team can decide its own destiny. The next hack is to minimize meetings. We talked about reducing uh, your email inbox, and that's great. But you also have to get free time on your calendar. You just can't be in meetings all day and expect to get anything done, especially as part of a big collaborative team. So here's a trick, something you can do with your manager. Uh, we do this all the time at work, actually. Uh, go to this site, bit.ly meet cost. It is a meeting cost calculator. And what you can do with this is enter in the amount of attendees, their pay, and you can see how much that one hour meeting where they talk about cleaning out the refrigerator and how to wash the dishes that are in the sink <laughs> so that they don't pile up and attract tenants. You can see how much that's cost in your organization. What if we took all that money and put it into user research? What if we put it into new tools? What if we put it towards our customers? Oh my god, think about all the awesome things we could do, right? Instead of having meetings. This is an empty meeting room, this photo here, for a reason. It's because most good things do not happen in meetings. Most good things do happen when teams work together collaboratively, and that doesn't take a meeting. So what does a daily stand-up look like? Daily stand-up is one of the three meetings that are allowed in Agile. There's a daily stand-up, there's a planning meeting, and then there's a retrospective, and that's it. Three meetings, you're done. Here's what a daily stand-up looks like. A bunch of people standing up. And that's to keep meetings short. If you're a fan of Battlestar Galactica, and I know you are, yeah? Oh, wow. That's, yeah, let's hear it. Sci-fi, yeah. Boom. Don't let me do my guy's Baltar impersonation. If you're a fan of Battlestar Galactica, uh, something Admiral Kane says in season two is that she has her officers' meetings uh, in rooms with no chairs. Uh, and that's to keep them short. She's spot on, and this is a great idea. What you do in the, uh, uh, in the daily stand-up meeting is go for just three topics. You talk about what you did yesterday, what you're doing today, and any impediments that are in their way. And that brings us to the idea of transparency. It's another hack. In Agile, you'll see people using a lot of whiteboards, or sometimes you can use Windows like you have here. And what you have is a bunch of Post-it notes, and they're just categorized really easily into things like story, meaning our user story, something that's focused on our customer, what you're doing, what's in process, what needs to be tested, and what is done. And what that means is that anyone can walk by the area where you're working. Your CEO, your janitor, perhaps they're the same person. It's been a meme lately. They can walk by and they can see exactly what you're up to, know at any given moment what your status is on everything you're doing. They can see in person the ways that you are affecting change for the customer. It's amazing. So transparency builds trust and accountability. This is something that Agile really excels at. Um, an online tool for doing this is Trello. Um, and uh, I've linked to Trello here. There's also a Chrome extension that allows you to add Agile story points to Trello called Scrum for Trello. Great tool. Uh, distilled use that as part of, you in the, uh, of building Distilled U, as a matter of fact. Here's another principle. Be biased towards action. Let nothing get in the way of delivering value to customers. Not politics, not internal mechanizations, nothing. Your goal is to always be active in producing something of value for your users. Um, you can see Rachel here. She's so active. Actually, both her feet are up in the air uh, at the time this photo was shot. It's very hard to do. Um, she's active. You guys should be too. So an agile hack is that you make your own commitments. The organization doesn't tell you what to do. As an agile developer or as an agile marketer, you actually sign up. 
And you have someone who's challenging you to always take more stories, more user stories, create more value for your users. But at the end of the day, you're responsible for saying what you will and will not do. Um, and here we see uh, an agile planning meeting where the staff is doing exactly that. They're looking at stories together and they're figuring out as a team, what can we take on in the next two week cycle? This is something you can steal and it makes you more accountable. Here's another hack, remove impediments. It's gonna be really hard to get any work done with, uh, with Keyboard Cat here. It's actually a photo for uh, Joanna Ward because she said she was sneaking in a lot of cat photos into her presentation. So um, remove impediments. With Agile, we have a person who's in a role that is charged with nothing, nothing except removing impediments from the team's progress. What a powerful role. When something comes up, when you need Wi-Fi, when you need a power cord, when you need someone to get out of your way, when you need someone to not micromanage you, when you need collaboration with someone who's never around, that is what the Scrum Master role does. That's all it does is remove impediments to keep the team flowing towards producing value for users. It's a great hack. We should all do this because it unties our hands. We need the freedom to do our jobs. Our organizations hired us to do SEO, inbound marketing, paid search, whatever it is you're doing, social media, but they so often get in our way of doing that. They so often tie our hands. By removing impediments, we can go back to producing value for users. And finally, maximizing the work that you don't do. What a great idea. What if you had a system where you could do work for people, for your customers, uh, that provides value to them, and then only that? Nothing else. A lot of us get saddled with things like keyword reports, right? Produces relatively little value, or those all-hands staff meetings. Well, part of Agile is figuring out what you do that does not produce value, and then jettisoning that. So this is a great organizational hack. This is something we can do. You, it allows you to focus on real work, not work. Final principle is don't hate, iterate. We say this at REI all the time, because here's the thing, when you're moving this fast, you're gonna make mistakes, and mistakes are okay. It's part of the process. And do not have the illusion that doing waterfall development saves you from making mistakes. It just makes you slower. So we're gonna steal some ideas from the lean startup here and talk about build, measure, learn, right? So whether or not you make mistakes, there's always something you can do a little bit better, and your users are gonna give you the feedback that allows you to iterate and do that. So when you have two-week development cycles, it's not the end of the world, right? In another two weeks, you can fix whatever problems or uh, lack of optimizations are out there. So here's the hack. Ship early, ship often. Get something out every two weeks. When we have six month, one year development cycles, it's really, really hard to respond to change, right? But if we plan our workout in two week or four week increments, then yeah, we can get fixes out really quick. If Google announces something new, we can take advantage of it. We'll have that up immediately, right? a lot better than only doing a release or two a year. So another great hack is uh, responding to change, right? This is what we talked about earlier. This is what makes your organization competitive and it makes your organization loved by your users. When they give you feedback, you can respond to it. You can actually do something about it. Something's wrong on the site, you can get an update out. That's what Agile is all about. It gives you that freedom to respond to change. Right? Disruption, flux. So oftentimes our requirements change in the middle of a, a, a cycle, right? We start out thinking we're gonna do X, and it, as it turns out, customers really need us to do Y. Agile is really helpful for that because of this final hack where we can avoid chasing perfection. We hold ourselves accountable to achieving the impossible. We're not doing ourselves any good, right? That's where burnout comes from. And we're certainly not doing anything helpful for customers because uh, the more we chase perfection, the less we actually release stuff out the door on our websites. So the hack is to stop being perfect. And, and here's the pro tip, really. There's no such thing as perfection. If you think there is, you're, you're fooling yourself. The hack is to just get more stuff out the door. Always be shipping to your customers. So what have we learned? We've learned that you can save your business, right? You can save your business, you can create lasting change in your company, you can do incredible things for your users by shipping value to them all the time, like Rachel, and of course, 
by doing so, you make a better community for yourself at work. You make a better community for yourself out here in our industry and in the world at large, and it's all by going agile. But don't do it for me. Certainly don't do it for yourselves or your teams. Don't do it uh, for, for your organization even. Do it because you love it. And with that, I'll take questions. Thank you, everyone. OK, we've got a few minutes for questions. We're going to do the raise your hand method. So anybody want to start? Oh, that helps. There we go. Hello. Uh, my question is just like, how would this apply to people who work mobile, remote from different locations? And if you have any insights about that. Yeah, definitely. That's a great question. Uh, we actually have uh, a, a lot of people working remotely. So uh, one of the things you can do uh, is uh, we're all familiar with IM tools, but that's just the start. Google has this great platform called Google Plus that has live video Hangouts. And uh, say what you will about Google+, Plus. I know there are things I want to see different on the platform, but Hangouts are incredible. Um, I actually use them for my schoolwork as well. So uh, that's what we use, and uh, uh, I'm sure there are other solutions as well in the field um, for uh, video conferencing. They're bringing people who are far away directly into the team. So uh, definitely share tips if you have them. Yeah, in the back there. My uh, speed writing is not that fast. Can you put up the bit.ly code to download the slides? Yeah, can uh, we get the bit.ly code? It's uh, bit.ly slash agile wins. And I just tweeted it out. So if you're following me at Jay Coleman, uh, I, uh, it's uh, my very most recent tweet. Yeah. John, uh, you mentioned the meet cost for meetings, to calculate meeting cost. Do you have anything similar for email? Oh, what a great idea. Because <laughs> uh, that would be a, a fantastic thing to do with uh, uh, the tool Patty just showed us, Boomerang, right? Because you could show before and after cost savings. What a great idea. Um, I don't, but my guess is that uh, something out there exists where you could probably track your time, right? And see how much time you're spending on email, which means sort of by definition, how much time you're not spending on you know, real work. So yeah, uh, I, I personally would Google that. I'm sure there's something out there. Rescue time? Rescue time. It's just in, rescue time. Yeah. Hi, with uh, the agile team structure that you have, what are the characteristics of a great account executive that you guys would value? I missed the last part. What are the characteristics? Like, what are the characteristics of a great account executive that you would have in, under the structure? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um, Agile forces us to manage differently and to think about how leadership and management function with people who are actually individual contributors out in the field. So I'll tell you, the, the structure we have is uh, that um, we have people who manage entire Agile streams uh, made up of UX designers and subject matter experts like SEOs um, and, uh, and front end producers, back end producers, information architects, et cetera. Um, those people actually all feed up into that manager. Um, it's, they tend to be pretty large teams. But the manager doesn't manage in terms of saying, hey, you, do this. That's a totally different role. That's a product owner. They're the ones who are pushing the agile uh, workers to sort of sign up for um, uh, producing value for users, taking on more of those user stories every cycle. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't get into sort of the agile framework here is because uh, it, it is a little complex, and you could spend half an hour on that alone. When you download these slides, there is a slide in the appendix, however, that touches on sort of the entire agile workflow and structure and roles. So do check that out. The characteristics of a uh, e-com exec is that they uh, have to become uh, familiar and a supporter of rapid change. Um, that's really what executives need to do. They need to um, remove impediments, get out of the way of work happening for customers, um, and uh, if anything, um, help other leaders within your organization do the same thing. Any other questions? All right, we set. All right. Oh, we have one? One more? Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, thank you. Up. That was awesome. That was okay. really good. I wish I would have known that stuff years ago. Very, very good. <laughs> Love that.